Amen. Amen. To God be the glory for the great things that he has done, that he is doing, and that he will do. As protocol has already been established, I still want to celebrate the angel of this house, Pastor Rogers, who is my dear friend and brother. And while I'm up here, I also want to say that I'm very upset at my own pastor, Pastor Richard White III, for preaching like that. Uh, I don't know what I did to upset him, but I think I could just go ahead and sit down. I think, he, I think he did enough for all of us. Amen. And that wonderful song selection, Because He Lives, and she transitioned from uh, what was supposed to be sung, Old Rugged Cross. I'm glad that she sung Because He Lives. Amen. Amen. Let's go to Matthew chapter 27, verses 45 and 46. Please forgive me for my uh, ignorance. I'm going to be reading from the New Living Translation, if that's all right. Because he lives. That's why we can read from the New Living. Because he lives. Amen. Matthew 27, verses 45 and 46. It says this, at noon, darkness fell across the whole land until three o'clock. At about three o'clock, Jesus called out with a loud voice, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani, which means, my God, my God, why have you abandoned me, forsaken me? Amen. You may be seated. Lord, Heavenly Father, we thank you, we glorify you, we magnify you. But before we say anything, we want to bow our heads to you. Lord, we ask you in the mighty name of Jesus to decrease Eddie Cooper Jr. and increase you. Hide me behind yonder's cross. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable to you, my Lord, my strength, and my Redeemer. Amen. Just to set the scene a little bit, you don't mind if I moonwalk and try to bring us all up to date. Jesus spoke three times during his first three hours on the cross. First, Jesus prayed for those who were crucified him. He said, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. Now, this is just me and my spiritual imagination. The tense of this word indicates that Jesus did not just pray this one time, but I just believe that he prayed this over and over again. Because I believe that Jesus prayed for the religious leaders who had demanded his crucifixion. I believe that he prayed for the two thieves who were crucified at his side. I believe that he prayed for the Roman soldiers who carried out this terrible act. And I think I could bring this home by saying he prayed for the curious seekers who merely came to the crucifixion to watch him die. Yeah. Can I pause right here and say we all got some haters yeah. that would love to see us fall and instead, instead of praying for us, they like to pray on us. I also believe that he prayed for those who mocked him, the ones that were saying he saved others himself why he can't save himself but lastly I believe he prayed for a crazy dark-skinned brother like me who is full of sin who is full of a lot of stuff but I thank God that he took time out of death to pray for me next I, he spoke to the dying thief when the thief prayed Lord, remember me when you come into your kingdom. I believe that Jesus put death on Paul's and opened up the doors of the church. Welcome in a new member that didn't have to get the right hand of fellowship, that didn't have to go through any type of vote to join his church. But at that very moment, he was with him in paradise. The third, Jesus spoke a word of love. 
he spoke to his loving mother, and I see you over there, Sister Mary Cooper. He made sure that his earthly mother was taken care of by the disciple that he loved. But then, after three hours on the cross, something amazing happened. The Bible tells us from the sixth into the ninth hour, there was darkness all over the land. The New Living Translation and everybody else can see that this sixth hour to the ninth hour is really from noon to about 3 p.m. It was a deep darkness, a mysterious darkness, an unexplainable darkness, a terrifying darkness, darkness at midday, darkness at high noon, darkness at what usually is the brightest moment of the day. I guess the question is, how can it be? Let me keep going. Jesus spoke. Yes. This gets me every time. Because my Savior loved us so much that he took this pain for us. But Jesus spoke three, three times during his first three hours. Then there came this Three hours of unexplainable, terrifying darkness accompanied by a dreadful silence. Yeah. Jesus spoke not a word. Yeah. And to the end of those three long, agonizing hours, the only sound that we heard for those three hours was the raspy breathing of our Lord trying to push itself back against the cross. All the pain that he was struggling with, with nails in his left hand. Nails in his right hand. Nails in his feet. A crown of thorns on his head. But there was darkness among the earth. Someone that probably was a little sarcastic probably quoted the scripture found in Amos. Chapter 8, verse number 9. And it says, it shall come to pass in the day, saith the Lord God, that I will cause the sun to go down at noon and I will darken the earth in the clear day. Then once again, there was silence. A fearful silence. A dreadful silence. Silence and more silence. Darkness and more darkness. Then suddenly, somebody say suddenly. Since y'all been sitting there all day and some of y'all haven't moved yet, somebody say suddenly. Just in case some of y'all took some melatonin before you came in, I want to make sure that everybody wake up. Somebody say suddenly. After three long, excruciating hours of darkness, Jesus broke his silence. All of a sudden, a pitiful, agonizing, and terrible cry pierced the blackness. Eli, Eli, Lama, Shabbatani which means, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? I got a lot of questions with this, and I know y'all are some Bible readers here, so y'all already going to beat me to Psalms 22. I already know that, so I'm just going to stick straight to what I know. Jesus is God. So how in the world does God forsake God? Y'all sleepy in here, that's all right. How can God forsake God? This is Jesus. Came down 40 in two generations. This is Jesus that was born in a manger. This is Jesus who healed the sick, raised the dead. This is Jesus that unstopped deaf ears, gave sight to the blind. This is Jesus that told Lazarus, get up and come forth. This is Jesus. But yet even Jesus at his most humanistic time, yes, cried out, yes, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? But I love this because if you keep reading your text, you will see a whole bunch of sarcastic people as well. Because you do understand that sarcastic people didn't just start at Second Baptist, Dexter Avenue, didn't just start at the Room Church, or it's definitely not at New Mount Moriah. But the people of the crowd, when Jesus cried this out, these uh, pitiful Negroes 
I'm sorry, this is Second Baptist. I shouldn't say that here. These pitiful Negroes said that he must be calling on Elijah. Let him alone. Let's see if Elijah will come and save him. Well, my question is, how do we explain our Lord's pitiful cry? In the Bible, darkness is often used as a symbol of sin. Darkness is used as a symbol of death. Darkness is used as a symbol of judgment. Hell is a real place that most church people are going to go to. Hell is a real place. Let me say that again before I go over your head. That church folk, I didn't say Christians. I didn't say disciples. I said church folk. You know, the one that goes through the routine of coming on Sunday, and the only time that they speak Jesus is from 10.30 a.m. to 1 p.m. Church folk that, that, that is specialized, they specialize in church meetings. Church folk. I only got 10 minutes. Let me keep going. <laughs> my Lord, my God. Jesus. Somebody say Jesus. Jesus was the sinless son of God. He was tempted in every way like a human. Yet, he never failed to sin. Never once in his life he sinned. He was totally innocent. He was the spotless lamb. But can I tell you something? You and I are not innocent. You and I are totally guilty. You and I should have been, could have been, and we should have been on that cross. But thanks be to God. Yet they're hanging on this cross. It was Jesus who was dying for every evil thing that I said last night. Every evil thought that you're thinking right now as you are observing me and judging me as I'm trying to preach this. Every evil thought that you have said behind Pastor Rogers' back. I thank God that he died on this day. He was dying in my place. Thank you, somebody. Somebody else should have screamed right out with her and said, thank you, Jesus. Thank God. And when they pierced him in his side, the blood came streaming down. And because his blood covers us, we have a chance of everlasting life. The Bible says that God made him who knew no sin to be sin for us, that we might become righteousness of God in him. Isaiah said it like this, yet the Lord laid on him the sins of us all. You see, God is holy and cannot look upon sin. For this reason, the father turned away from the son in the awful moment when the son was made to be sin on our behalf. For the first time in all eternity, the son of God knew the horror of being separated from his father because you do know that the father and son has always agreed, has always been in constant communication. But as soon as the son absorbed my sin, your sin, and all of our sins, no wonder at the six long hours on the cross, and especially after those three long agonizing hours of separation for the Father, yeah. Jesus cried out loud, yeah. My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Our sin in its ugliest, nastiest form was laid upon my Jesus. Moreover, his righteousness was put on hold for us. But, I'm about to get excited before y'all do. By his amazing grace, 
Oh, I wish I could sing because I think I would try to pull it a little bit. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound. Jesus knew that the final result of sin was to be abandoned by God. He was abandoned by the Father so that we might not ever be abandoned by him. Y'all don't hear me? Jesus was judged so we won't have to be judged. Somebody has said that Jesus Christ was the most God forsaken man who ever lived because of what he did for us on the cross. You and I who have believed in Jesus will never be forsaken by God because of the precious blood which Jesus shed on the cross. You and I don't have to pay the penalty of our sins because the price has all already been paid. It wasn't paid on Leveway. It wasn't paid by a firm. It wasn't paid on credit, but it was paid in full. Because of the blood that Jesus shed on Calvary, you and I can be forgiven for every sin. Hallelujah, the every sin. Because of the cross, we who believe in Jesus will never have to cry out, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? I think I'm going to close right there. I think I'm going to go ahead and take my seat because a lot of us still don't understand what's going on. But for some of us that do understand, I believe that we can all close this thing out, get a little Southern Baptist in here, and be able to be able to give our God some praise by opening up our mouth and saying thank you Jesus thank you Lord for dying for me thank you Lord for loving on me thank you Lord for keeping me thank you Lord for delivering me thank you Lord for redeeming do I have anybody in here that's not afraid to stand up on their feet give God some praise let out a hallelujah let out a thank you Jesus excuse me if I'm a little bit too ghetto for you but I know that my God deserve all of the glory all of the praise and all of the honor can somebody say thank you Oh, I'm not going to sit down until somebody say thank you. I'm not going to sit down until somebody say thank you.